If you guys are here in Arizona, you guys know that we've been having some monsoons coming through and we had one come through in the middle of last night. So lots of thunder and lightning, lots of heavy downpours. So what I wanna do is I kinda of wanna give you guys a shot of what the farm look like, looks like after that. So we had, we had no rain so far this morning. So at least since we've been awake and we've been out, it's about 10.30 in the morning or so, so mid-morning, and it's pretty muggy. Um, we're getting mosquitoes, uh, which we're not used to here in Arizona. <laughs> so that's kind of a bummer. But I wanted to show you kind of how it looks after the rains, because if you guys are watching the video we posted today, you guys are seeing the first real serious rainfall that we got here. And I wanted to give you guys an idea of how quickly things dry up. So you can kind of get an idea. There's really not much in the way of water on the ground. Now we do have a little bit back here next to the sorghum. So that has a little bit um, here in a low spot. And that's actually where some of the irrigation runs off. And I want to show you the sorghum, um, but you'll see down on the ground there, right there, we do have some water that's pulled up that has not actually evaporated. And obviously we don't have anything on the ground to soak that up. However, back here where the garden beds are, you can see there that we don't have, we, we're not having any issues with any pooling there. In fact, the only water that I see back here on the farm is right here next to the sorghum. We have uh, kind of a pond up at the front of the house where we don't, kind of a, a sort of a kind of a catchment area. Um, not that it was on purpose, but it is. Um, but what I wanted to really show you guys more than anything is this sorghum, which is just going crazy here with this kind of more high humidity that we've had here over the last week or two. And then these couple of rainstorms that have really drenched it with water. Squatting down, I'm probably about three feet tall or so. I have this sorghum here that's taller than me. I have some sorghum in the middle that's even taller. Now it varies a little bit. There's some that's obviously much lower, but I can tell you with the moisture that's down on the ground and also from cutting this back, remember we cut this back to about six to eight inches um, just a couple weeks ago. You can see how much has come back. And then also we had taken all of the cuttings and put them down on the ground. Well, now that we've had the moisture come through, I can see the decay in all of that green and it's laying down a beautiful layer of mulch that'll eventually turn into compost right here on top of the wood chips. And I can tell you, I can definitely feel the moisture in here in the middle of this sorghum patch. I mean, I'm just drenched. I feel like I'm in Florida. I know we got some of you guys out there and it feels like it. It feels like 100% humidity, really, really warm. And this sorghum Sudan grass is very, very happy. So another question we get from you guys, and it's pretty regular, is how are the jujubes doing? And we have not given you guys a jujube update, and we need to do that. If you guys remember, we have three jujubes that we planted this winter. Um, I think it was back in February or so, and they came in the mail. They were tiny. They were in little, I think, I don't even think they were one gallon. They were maybe like half gallon pots or something like that, but they were very, very small. Now you got to see how well these jujubes are doing here in the middle of summer. Remember, these were just sticks when we planted these here um, this winter. And you can see how well this is growing. I'm gonna say that it's probably pushing about four feet tall or so. Lots of brand new growth that's just been put on here in the last week or so. But we, we really noticed in the very beginning it tried to set a lot of fruit and then it's come back and just exploded as far as the growth is concerned. So this jujube is doing fantastic. Each of them is doing good to varying degrees, but uh, this one by far the best performing. So something else that we've had this week is we've actually been able to harvest some figs. You guys know what we do with figs here. Let me go to this one. This is the panache fig. We've got our organza bags covering a couple of figs here. And I think, oh yeah, I've got one that's definitely ripe. So I'm gonna snag that single-handedly. Panache figs are interesting because we do get a very, very small crop 
here in the middle of summer, and then we get a really decent one in the fall. But I'm gonna go ahead and open this one. Let's see how it looks. Oh yeah, that looks really, really good. Not perfectly ripe. We do notice that the fall panache figs look much better. They're a lot juicier, but that'll give you an idea of the fruit. You can see it's uh, kind of got that strawberry looking color. Usually these actually are a lot darker, so this isn't quite completely ripe, but. Mmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow, that is really good. And we didn't get a chance to have breakfast this morning. Talking with my mouth full, but. Mmm. Wow. That was really good, you guys. I know there's other figs that taste great. This panache fig so far is my favorite. But we've had one other fig. I don't know if there's anything ripe, but I do want to show you because we had a couple ripe ones this week and it was fantastic. So this is the fig tree that we got from Reed at RSI Growers. You can see it's a beautiful tree. It's probably about four and a half to five feet tall and almost as wide. We've actually had to stake the center here um, just because it's growing so fast. Now we call this the RSI white fig because we don't know what the variety is, or I should say Reed doesn't know for sure. It was given to him a few years back from one of his customers or neighbors, I believe. And it was one of those family heirloom trees basically. And he has these available. Unfortunately, there's no ripe figs on this. I am gonna show you guys that once we do find one. We had two of them this week and they were nice and big, about the size of a fully developed brown turkey fig. The inside was this beautiful, it's, it's mainly a white flesh, but kind of a, a, a light brown, almost reddish brown, honey colored center. And it was just amazingly sweet and juicy. Unfortunately, I don't have one here today that I can eat, but I wanted to show you guys this tree. A fantastic variety that does really well. This has been in the ground. I think we put it in this spring, if I'm not mistaken. So just a few months back, might've been the fall. Either way, it's been in the ground for less than a year. You can see how much amazing growth has come out of it. And we've already gotten some ripe figs off of it. So very good variety, tastes amazing. So just kind of walking back here with the figs, that is our Violet de Bardot. You can see that, that tree's doing fantastic. It's got some brand new growth on it here. Uh, we did have a few figs on there. I went ahead and removed them. Um, I don't want that trying to fruit, but I'm seeing it's a nice compact tree. One of the things people have talked about is being able to put those in pots and grow them well that way. And I can see by the way it's growing now that that's definitely the case. One of the things with the fig trees is they do have a tendency to struggle a little bit, especially in June and into July when we're very hot and dry. We had a lot of leaf drop and they were looking kind of sparse, but as I stand back here further, you'll get a good view. They've come back really, really strong. back where we have the livestock acre and we attempted to do some field fencing on this this morning and it didn't turn out so good. I've never worked with field fencing before but I can already tell you I don't like it <laughs> at all. So it was really kind of difficult to work with. We don't like the way that it looks and with our kind of thought process behind what we're gonna use this acre for, it's changed a little bit. We had originally planned on raising livestock specifically back there. That's why we, we, we've referred to it several times as the livestock acre. But we're have, starting to have some different ideas as far as how we wanna run livestock, especially after having the conversation with our friend about cattle. I think the uh, mobile process with animals is the best way to go. Um, actually had a viewer reach out, suggest it's here in town that we wanna go visit. Um, they have irrigated land and they're doing the same thing with uh, the mobile um, pins basically for the livestock. And I think with what Lori and I wanna do here on the farm, I think that that's uh, probably the kind of more the direction we're headed. And so we're kind of rethinking the area and a field fencing type thing is not necessary at this point. So I think we're gonna go back to the drawing board. We have some ideas as far as a cable uh, that we can stretch across the frame that's already there. I think we're kind of leaning more that direction, but uh, now we've got uh, some field fencing we're gonna have to take back off of the frame. Back here at the rain gauge, and might be hard to pick up on camera, but 
We got just under half an inch last night, or I should say this morning. It sounded like it was one like major deluge. So about a half an inch of rain in a fairly short period of time. And that brings our total up over the last week to about an inch and a half, which doesn't sound like much, for, but for us out here in the desert, it's, it's a good amount. And that's really all we've gotten so far this summer during this monsoon season. So hopefully we'll get some more today. It definitely feels like it. I see clouds out in the distance, so I'll keep my fingers crossed that we get more. Because it's nice and humid, I don't think we're gonna have any issues with this drying, and I'm gonna go ahead and let this go to see what we get in a 24-hour time frame. But half an inch isn't too bad. So one of the new projects that Lori and I have here during the week is going through the game camera footage. There wasn't a whole lot that happened, but we did have a coyote. We've got some regular coyote activity that's coming up here, which is really not all that surprising. And we have those pesky jackrabbits we usually see one or two of them uh, coming in for water pretty, pretty consistently throughout the night. We have not seen javelina uh, here over the last couple weeks, no sign of them actually at all. So I'm hoping putting the water further away from the garden beds is making a difference there. And then we also are still seeing the owl, which we've nicknamed Hootie. <laughs> so we got a few shots of Hootie here on the water tank as well. So hopefully we'll start getting something a little more interesting but I think one of the issues we have is there's water here. When there's no water anywhere else in the desert, everybody comes here. Of course, we've got pools of water throughout the wash and in some of these other areas. So I don't think we're seeing quite the traffic that we normally will. The grapevines love this weather. So really hot and some humidity. These things, as you can see, are just taking off. These are the Cabernet Sauvignon that we have on the back of the vineyard garden. You can see some of the old growth in here, this dark, dark green, and then all of the light green here has all pushed out over about the last week or so, if you can believe that. I want to give you guys a shot of the cow peas. You can see they're doing really good back there. We actually had one of the sweet potatoes survive the onslaught of the uh, javelina in that first bed. But one thing I've got to make sure I give you guys an update on is our turkeys. They're doing fantastic. We did lose one turkey. Last weekend it was the smallest. In fact, there was a little brown one that I think Lori was holding. We don't even know why we had a brown turkey and now we unfortunately don't have a brown turkey. So but it's the only one that we've lost and it was the runt and I saw that it wasn't eating all that well and it was kind of having a hard time walking and it looks like it fell over onto its back in the middle of the night and could never right itself. Um, however, these guys are doing really good and we're really enjoying spending time with them. In fact, they all want to know why I haven't opened this door up yet. Hey, little turkeys. There you go. Slippery, huh? I know. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's trying. Oh. Here we go. Oh, hey there. You just gonna sit, kind of hang out. One of the things you guys will notice—they're obviously flying really well. So these turkeys are, what, a week and a half? A week and a half. Yeah, so they're about 10 days old. And you can see they're feathering out really well. They really like to kind of roost on our hands, which is pretty neat. Uh, the chickens don't want anything to do with that nonsense. Uh, but the turkeys are perfectly happy with that. In fact, you'll see this one. I mean, she would rather be walking around on my arm than up here on the wooden wedge. We have two different types of turkeys. We have a Holland white and we have a blue slate. And I think we have mostly blue slates, but the whites are actually the ones that are the most aggressive as far as flying. So they're very curious and they want to be up on you. Like I've got this one cleaning her beak off on my arm, but they are a lot of fun. We're really enjoying having the turkeys here with us. You can see real light, just a beautiful light gray color. Still obviously a lot of chick feathers on them, but they're feathering out really, really well.
next weekend we will have our monthly live stream Q&A. That's gonna be at three o'clock Arizona time. Would love it if you guys can make it. It'd be great to talk to you guys. We really have a lot of fun answering questions, interacting with you guys in real time, and would love it if you can make it. If you guys haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. This is our weekly vlog where we try to give everybody an update from week to week on what's going on here on this brand new farm here in the desert of Arizona. Would love to have you as a subscriber and share the content. If you know anybody that is into this kind of thing, it definitely helps us if you would share the content. And you guys know our Amazon shop, that's a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Oh, my goodness. There are mosquitoes everywhere. Uh, ay, ay, ay. Look at me talk with my mouth open. Talking with my mouth open. It's kind of what you do, Dwayne. <laughs> oh. Hey, beautiful. Hi. Hydration. Ooh, I need hydration. Things are not going good. <laughs> Things are not going good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're like totally surrounding me. Get off. Okay. Ugh. Oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, one of the things that I hate with a passion are mosquitoes. And we put repellent on today. And they see, I must just be sweating right through it or something. This is not good. I don't, this, is, this is not supposed to happen in Arizona. 